Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Critchlow. I'm a consultant psychiatrist. I've also been a church pastor and I've been doing a series of talks on the problem of suffering. And in this last talk, I want to just summarise a little bit of what we've been saying and then answer one final and important question. Well, where have we been? Well, first of all, we said that God is a God of love. That is his name. That is his definition. And in love, he chooses to make people for relationship with himself. But he also gives them freedom. Because you can't have love without having freedom. But through that freedom, man chose to rebel against God. And the story of Adam and Eve is the beginning of that rebellion and how man has rebelled against God throughout history. And through that rebellion, pain and suffering has come into the world. We also talked about the rebellion of Lucifer and his angels and how their descent to this earth also brought pain and suffering and we might even link natural disasters in there as how the effect of Satan on this world. We also thought about how man had been made in the image of God and how through that image he was to rule over the animals and the kingdoms of this world and even Jesus when his disciples were in the boat and a fierce storm came he rebuked the storm. Who knows whether mankind in relationship to God can actually work similar physical powers because we're meant to rule over this world. But that rule has been lost because we've been subjected to sin and subjected to evil. And we've thought also about how God is a judge and will judge evil. We've also thought about the cross and how through that cross we see demonstrated God's heart of love. And through that cross we see that sin is judged and finds its judgment in the death of Christ. But we also see through Christ release of love, release of forgiveness, release of a new power. We've thought too about the tremendous suffering in this world and its different forms. But we've also seen how Christ in his earthly ministry reverses suffering. He brings healing. He never brings suffering to anyone. He's always bringing healing and blessing to the lives he touches. And we said that is the heart of God. The heart of God is for healing and for blessing. And of course, we've also thought about how the church, the, the church's mandate is to do that. Suffering in the New Testament is persecution. It's not a, a, um, a problem in a sense to be solved. It's an evil to be overcome. And we've thought about how that suffering and pain is overcome through the power of the church and through the power of Christ. However, the church sadly has often let the side down and instead of there being healing there's often been uh, abuse of power and other problems and love of money and other kinds of things that we've thought about. So suffering is still there and yes there's still healing there and there's still overcoming suffering is there but suffering is still there and you might ask the question the very real question well why does God not intervene to remove the suffering and that's a very good final question to seek to address but as we've demonstrated suffering is in some way related to sin and evil it doesn't mean to say that in an individual life that the suffering is due to evil in that life, far from it. But suffering and pain and sickness in this world is the result of evil in the world and the result of rebellion against God. And if we can see that connection in its broad terms, as I say, not in an individual connection, but in broad terms, suffering, pain, sickness, evil is connected to the presence of evil and the presence of Satan. 
we can see that actually it can only be overcome by, in a sense, the coming again of Christ. You see, if Christ comes to remove the suffering, then he also has to deal with the sin. You can't deal with one fully without dealing with the other. If you remove the suffering and pain, what are you going to do about the sin and evil behind it? Because that sin and evil requires judgment. And of course, there will be, there will be a final judgment. Christ will return. And those who love him will be with him forever. But there will be a judgment on this cosmos, on this world order. And you see, God is holding back that judgment. The word of God says this. In Second Peter it says this, The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not willing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. You see, the word of God, the message of Christ, is a message of repentance, saying we need to repent and turn from our evil ways and turn back to Christ and find in him wonderful forgiveness made available through his cross and through his resurrection. And you see, those early disciples, they went to their deaths, all saying that Christ was risen. People will die sometimes for what they believe. But people will not die, will not give their lives for something that they know is not true. And you see, those disciples knew it was true. They'd walked with Christ, they'd talked with Christ, they'd eaten with Christ after the resurrection. And they go to the death saying, Jesus is alive, Jesus is true. And you see, Jesus is alive today. And he wants us to turn to him in repentance and trust and confidence in him. That's why he's holding back the judgment. He wants everyone to repent. But there will come a time when suffering is removed. And that suffering will all be removed when Christ comes again. But it comes with judgment too. And God is holding back that day. He's holding back that time. So that men can turn to him. Of course, still today, there's relief from suffering. There's relief through medical work, through psychiatric work. There's relief through healing the healing of the body. There's re relief through healing of the soul. There's relief through healing of our deep pain and suffering through inner healing and its variants. There's all kinds of healing available. But suffering as a whole will not be removed until Christ returns and comes again. And that is our fond hope. That is our joy. That is our expectation that Christ will come. But until that time, we need to share this beautiful message People need to repent and turn back to Christ in faith and confidence in him and receive the forgiveness that he alone offers. Thank you for listening to this series. I hope you've gained blessing and help through it. I hope your lives have been enriched through it. I've actually enjoyed presenting it because I've enjoyed going back through some of these lovely stories of how God acts in our lives and through our lives. So God bless you and thank you for listening.